first morning, welcome all of you to join our Angel Investor Forum tonight, presented by Peach Perfect. Let's give a big applause to all of you first. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Ada. It's tonight MC. And good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Our aim of this forum is to help individuals develop better know-how into becoming more successful angel investor. On behalf of World Venture, I would like to welcome our guest speaker tonight. They are Mr. Desmond Marshall, Managing Director of World Venture. <laughs> and also Mr. Duncan Shiel, Managing Director of Indian Rush Training, and Mr. S.C. Mack. Vice Chairman of PLC Community Entrepreneurship Capital and Private Equity Association. Thank you. And they will share with you their wills and experiences on the topics of hands-on, hands-off, should an angel active manage a company before our forum begin. Let's give a big welcome hand to our first speaker, Mr. Desmond Marshall, to kick off our angel investment forum tonight. Mr. Marshall, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, welcome. Uh, I didn't expect such a great turnout, actually. <laughs> I was just focusing on probably around 20 people. So how many people do we have right now? Around 40, 50 people. Uh, that's a good thing because, hey, I'm better than James Bond because James Bond is having their premiere night tonight downstairs. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for coming. Um, one of the aims, uh, many of you may know that I have another event or another uh, platform called Pitch Perfect, and that's the main platform for where we actually find uh, investment opportunities, uh, new projects, new companies to invest in. Now, in I've been doing Pitch Perfect for like two years already now. Um, from a few, few times previously, we have seen a big change in terms of how people are becoming investors. So, the main, so which is why we're spinning off this Angel Investors Forum uh, separately out from Pitch Perfect. Uh, it's still part of the Pitch Perfect series, but then again, we are looking at just focusing on how we help angel investors or investors on a general whole, how to invest better and to be most, much more successful. So before we go on to the layer part, I would like to invite our venue partner for today, Deloitte, Philip Law, to come up and speak a little bit about the work. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and a very warm welcome to Deloitte. Uh, Deloitte is pleased to work with Rouge Branches, uh, Angel Investment Network, Tsinghua Investor Business School, City University MBA Alumni Association of today's Angel Investor Forum. Uh, let me give uh, five to ten minutes to give a great introduction to Deloitte. <coughs> Uh, Deloitte is the largest professional services firm in the world. We have over uh, 670 offices across, the, across different countries. And in China, we have 22 offices across the China. We have, uh, have 13,500 professionals in different offices. We have a uh, strong cooperation with government regulators and organizations. And we have also support a lot of leading forum, for example, Asian Financial Forum, World Forum for Asia, and also, of course, for today's Angel Investor Forum event. Uh, let, let me uh, give a quick uh, introduction to our services. Uh, actually, we have five mainstream services line, including all the service, uh, enterprise risk services, um, tax, financial advisory, and consulting. And for different uh, for different services, we also um, have a lot of uh, publication, and we have a lot of expert in each area. Uh, I, I try, try to keep it as short as possible. <laughs> and for industry, uh, actually, we have different industry group. Uh, we divided our 
industry into a industry, consumer business, uh, energy and resources, global financial service and life science and healthcare, manufacturing, real estate, TIP and public sector. So in, in each industry, actually, we have a group of uh, professional and expert. Uh, they spend a lot of time to do a lot of research and support, actually support each industry, the development uh, and uh, other potential services, and we also uh, work with different leading companies in each, each sector. Uh, we also have a different program, uh, including uh, in China, we have a uh, you know, China VC and PE program, and we work a lot of association, including P PVCE association and different uh, and different private equity company. For for Deloitte, actually, we, we have a team called uh, client industry and marketing, which is a uh, which uh, we are held a lot of uh, we have a lot of event with different association. We also have a DGA called um, Deloitte Growth Academy, which we work with a lot of university to provide different seminar and training to to the public. Uh, for for I, I would like to introduce our Southern China leader Bong Chen. Uh, he greatly supports the event, and this is why I am Philip Long and Hoan, which uh, he is the main coordinator for the venue. And at Deloitte, we believe that by participating, by working together and leveraging our knowledge and experience, our people and clients can be significantly advanced. And I assure you that Deloitte stand ready to support this collective effort to better serve the investor, invent, the angel investor group. I wish you enjoy tonight's Inventor Forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much. Okay. is pretty straightforward today. Uh, the main aim of this angel investor forum is to actually help people who have not invested in things that we've been doing. Uh, we're not talking about like property, uh, we're not talking about stocks, we're talking about investing inside a company itself as a shareholder. And one of the things that we're looking at is that we're seeing a big trend coming along because people are not really into stocks anymore, or uh, well, they are, but they're not winning a lot of money. Uh, they are interested in becoming and say, hey, I want to find the next Alibaba. Uh, uh, I want to find the next DGI, or the next Uber, or the next Airbnb. Now, uh, during this individual investors forum, uh, what we do is actually we try to share some of the experiences and also uh, what we have done previously. And also later on, we have a panel with the panel speakers sharing their uh, experiences as well. So I will start with uh, what I do. Uh, one of the things that I do is actually I save companies. So basically, we work with uh, VC companies, uh, private, uh, mostly VC companies, and say, hey, I've got invested in these companies, so how do I actually save them? Or how do I actually make them much more competitive? Uh, to enhance them uh, later on. And later on, we'll keep the question and answers later on to the very final end after the panel speaker because at the panel, we'll be talking about should we have hands-on or hands-off in terms of managing a new company that we've invested in. So it's really a, a big topic because uh, we've handled a lot of different investors, private investors, and many say, hey, I don't want to take any management roles or do anything with the company, I, I just give you a hundred bucks, so by tomorrow you give me back two hundred dollars. Uh, there's also the people who come up with, to us and say, hey, uh, I'll give you a hundred bucks, but I have to be part of the management team, I have to help you out, and then sometimes, uh, many times as well, I've, I've seen in many cases that it actually just worsens the, the business operations itself. So should we or should we not touch on to the company itself? So I'll be very brief because um, 
I, my role normally will be the VCs coming to me and say, hey, Desmond saved my company. So it's pretty much at the very end of the stage, how we actually save a company. So hopefully I will give you some insights as to how, it, how as an angel investor, and also I'm not an eye banker, so I'm totally different from what most people will be thinking. So from a more management point of view, how we can be more effective and much more smart in terms of how we turn around a company. So a bit of a warning for us because uh, like all stunts, um, it's being done by a professional. So if you have not done any consulting work or if you have not actually restructured any companies, you have to be very careful because I've seen or we've seen a lot, we've seen a lot, whoops. It's a true warning. Ah, okay, it's a real true warning. Okay. So yeah, we've, we've seen all the people coming up to me and say, hey, I want to save this company, but I want to be hands-on on how, how we can actually save this company. And But most of the time when they say, yeah, uh, how can I help the company, it's the concept of, hey, I'd like to spend like $50 million and invite Brad Pitt to jump over the Great Wall of China. And hopefully I will get more business or more sales out of it, which is totally nonsense in many cases. Now. In a way, when we have to transform a losing company into a new company, uh, there are a lot of things to, to handle and a lot of elements, moving parts that we need to be aware of. So the fact is, we only have around 10 minutes or so today. I'm going to just show you some of the experiences I have. Uh, of course, if you need real, uh, each company is different. So if you really need something that is very specific to your company or to your industry, you need to find the right people to talk to. So that's the first one. It's amazing where, when I go into a company, most of the people or most of the investors will not be focusing on sales. Now, as the logic, most people will say, hey, if the company is failing, let's focus on the sales. Well, common sense is not common sense anymore. <laughs> exactly. Because when I talk to some of the companies, I will be asking the first question to the CEO. When was the last time you talked to the real paying customer? Now, most of them will be saying, hey, it's not my job. It's the business development guy or the sales guy. Now, if I'm hearing this kind of line around here, the first thing is I don't really want to invest in this company because the CEO should be the first big sales in the company. He should be more concerned about the sales than anyone else. But most of the time, when I go into the company and say, I'm, during the board meetings, most people will be talking about, hey, let's get Brad Pitt, or oh, hey, let's, let's invite Angelina Jolie as well to jump over the Great Wall. And uh, let's get all the flowers, get Katia in, get LB in, or whatever, and then let's make a big, big noise like the 007 downstairs. Let's make a big noise and hopefully people will be buying our stuff. And uh, that's really worrying because everyone is focusing on marketing and not sales. And that's pretty worrying because Marketing is fun to play with, but it's no good for a company if you're really trying to save or transform the, the losing company into something winning. And if you're spending more time and money in something that's not relevant, then you're not looking at a real company trying make, making the ends meet at the end of the day. One of the companies, uh, well, when I say organic sales, uh, organic growth is what I call and say, um, if you're just buying or selling, hey, I'm buying a, a bottle of wine, I'm selling a bottle of wine, I'm getting a profit and a revenue. That's what I call organic, organic growth, organic sales. Now these are normal, but in an investor point of view, in the real world, it takes a long time. Especially when the, I deal a lot with the luxury brands, and many of them will be saying, hey, my main problem is what? It's basically two problems. One problem is where can I find new sales, new customers, and how can I reactivate the old customers to buy more? So to re-motivate these people. So it's all about the sales. Now, re most people will be thinking, hey, if I have Brad Pitt jump over the Great Wall, they will, they will be flocking in to, to buy my stuff, which is probably not the true case. Um, you, if you have to motivate someone, an old customer, it's difficult. If you have to motivate a new customer, it's much more even difficult. So the fact is, we think about investor-centric solutions. So one of the the things, uh, one of the examples that I have is uh, I used to help a company called Checkpoint. 
Checkpoint is the U.S. Stock Exchange listed, CKP. Uh, it's Fortune 500 company, and we were trying to spin off something else. Uh, they do security gates. So if you go to a retail store shop and steal something, the security gates go beep, beep, beep. It's that kind of thing. It's a pure hardware company. And like IBM, they are failing in many cases if you're just selling hardware. And one of the spin-offs that we were looking at were the library division. So you go to a library, you steal a book out, and then it goes beep, beep, beep. The whole total solution. Yeah, it's very hardware-centric. And one of the things that we look at, we look into how we actually spin it up and change into a hardware plus service plus marketing company. So it totally changed the, the model itself. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more later on after, after the meeting if you're really interested. But the fact is, we were dealing, the real customers, if, we, if I were dealing with just organic growth, I was dealing with dinosaurs working in a bureaucratic environment. So librarians. Any librarians around here? <laughs> Hopefully not. So these are dinosaurs because they rely on government funding or public funding, charity funding, and they never spend anything. So imagine if you're selling a security system to the library and for the next 20 or 30 years they won't be buying something new from you. So that is no good business. And when we're talking about libraries, it's not like that. It's not like 7-Eleven. You can find other companies you can you can put into a library as well. So the fact is, if we are trying to save this company, organic growth will be a big no-no. So what can we do? What did we do? We actually looked into different investors. So in a way, uh, we did something very funny, which I will tell you right now. One of our biggest competitors was 3M. 3M is the company that does toilet brushes to rocket thrusters outside. So they're everywhere, 3M. So they're the biggest, they're number one. And Checkpoint was pretty much globally number two, and in some cases number three or number four. Now, when we were trying to change something, we were trying to spin off that department up, and we are trying to build it to a point where investors will be interested. Now, investors won't be interested at that point because we're starting new, we're spinning off something new, but we're still using some of the resources as back end with the checkpoint name. So what did we do was we looked into how we, how we motivate the investors. Now, motivate, motivating investors have different degrees. And one of the things is we struck fear in 3M. We purposely did a psychological warfare. So because we know that we couldn't get new investors coming in, we couldn't get new customers coming in as fast as we wanted to. And one of the best things, if you have a competitor, because in the library space, it's pretty much stagnant. Like I said, it's a dinosaur area. No one was touching it because it's not profitable or it's just a stagnant market around here. And, uh, and 3M was very complacent with them being number one. And we were not complacent in being number two. So we were changing something. But the fact is, we knew that, hey, finding new sales with the dinosaur librarians, it's not going to work. And if we're going to find new investors coming in, we're, we're still too young for, for that spin off around here. So what we did was we actually did purposely a real big campaign, a psychological campaign. We talked to all the customers that we have already. So we talked to the dinosaurs. We talked to each and every one of the dinosaurs, the end customers. And we, know that we knew that they were not going to buy from us at least not now, but they, they were very supportive of what we're doing. And we purposely made them in different methods, using different methods, to let them talk to 3M. 3M got a whiff of what we were doing. They were very complacent before, but they got a whiff of, okay, some number two is trying to dethrone us. And it got them fearful, because 3M doesn't want to lose in any way. So, the fact is, at the end of the day, we sold it to 3M. So the best way to take out a competitor is to buy up the competitor. So in a way, that's if, if some of you, because the main point is right now is uh, many of you here are not professional investors or you have not been in the invest, in company investment field before, you may be just following on what your profession is, you may be thinking about just organic growth, how to make the company good. But the fact is, if we're investors, we should be looking at not just organic growth methods, but also investor-centric solutions, how we can actually merge that together. 
because that's one of the tactics that we do a lot of, a lot of the times as well. And the good thing, you know, there's, there's a silver lining to it as well. We sold it in uh, 2007, and then came the economic crisis. So we were like, Woof, okay, we sold it quick, and uh, we were pretty happy at that time, and uh, the company checkpoint itself was pretty good, and uh, a bunch of VCs and the whole team ourselves, we made quite a good living back then, <laughs> and, uh, and I don't really care about how 3M is handling their business anymore. So uh, I think they're still sort of like selling the checkpoint stuff, but they, they actually killed it. So they covered it up and then just put it somewhere else and uh, forget about it. So which is why when you go to the library these days, you still see the 3M big chunky kind of a machine, the lending machine. It's 90% air inside. Okay, the last one is uh, exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've done previously, uh, I've helped with another company called Sogma.com. Uh, that's one of the biggest, largest China online music platform back around yeah, 10, 15 years ago. Um, and they call me in and say, hey, I really need to save this company. Now the company was selling nothing, just banner ad space. And it was fine back in the good days, good old days. And the, the fact is, they were, and in most China cases, uh, not now anymore, the Sokwa was selling or giving out unlicensed music copyrights. So they're playing music without any licenses. So basically, I'm going into the company with nothing to sell, just a bunch of like 1 mil, 2 million people traffic selling banner ads. And it, didn't, it was not working because the CEO doesn't have a clue what he was doing. And he was stuck in really the, the dinosaur ages around here. And, uh, and they couldn't think about the new ways of actually restructuring the company and doing something good with it. So it was losing a lot of money back then. And one of the things that I did went in, of course, uh, the, the normal uh, chop, and, chop and shop and also uh, how, how we actually do some of the things is to actually, uh, again, I knew that at that time there weren't going to be a lot of investors being interested in certain areas in the online music industry. So we had to restructure, restructure something into something different. And one of the things that we did, or what I did, was that actually I worked with some of the big sharks. So we're talking about the big Chinese investors. So these are the guys who have actual investment uh, club in, in the industry and they know what they're in interested in. So in a way, when I knew that they were interested in e-commerce, or having, well, we got the traffic already, but it's not enough, so they're interested in e-commerce, but they were also, at that time, at that point, everyone was talking about luxury e-commerce online, before even LV Gucci even started at that time. So we changed it accordingly, talked to the big shops, and said, hey, are you interested in doing something like this? And of course, initially say, hey, yeah, yeah, let's see how it goes. And, uh, and so I had to go in and restructure everything very, fairly quickly. And what we did was they actually built the platform into something different, not just the online e-commerce luxury platform, but also uh, one of the things that um, when people do the voice, every one of you heard the voice, Zhou uh, Gong these are on these um, platforms where people go up and, and sing, like American Idol. And, uh, but we did it online. But back at that time, most people weren't even doing anything like that. So we had the traffic, we built an online platform where people who wants to become the new, next superstar to go onto a platform and show off their music skills or dancing skills. At the same time, we knew some of the people will have the, the cash over there and they go to an online platform to buy stuff, stuff up. Uh, it was difficult because we have to do organic growth at the same time, but the good thing is, I was not looking at organic growth. I was looking at how I get an exit strategy out as soon as possible. And the good thing is we sold it to other investors. And how they deal with it is another story. So the fact is, in terms of the investment side and also organic management consulting side, there are different ways of doing things. It's too short today, but if you're really interested, let's talk together after we have the time to go here and and also networking session as well. If you're interested, of course, Take a add me on LinkedIn, or, or send an email to me, or WeChat. Uh, I'll, we'll pass name cards later on. So, but again, like I said, 
if you are not originally a, a management consultant, or if not skilled in restructuring companies, really find a professional man, because yes, you will lose sleep over it, you will really die, seriously. Because yes, you haven't seen boardroom fightings before. I've been there. So yeah, we, we beat up people who doesn't really work. So thank you very much. But next, let's not clap yet. I want to invite Duncan and also Essie to our panel. So let's give a big hand to them. Topic for today is oh, I need to change. I should have flown Desmond earlier so that he could have saved some of our companies. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too late. <laughs> um, like I said, one of the, the topics that many of us are very interested in, or, well, I, I go through every day, Duncan and SE go through every day as well, is uh, how should an Indian investor, or just a normal investor, should they be managing a company actively, or just sit on the sidelines and wait for the return? Now, there are a lot of situations where, hey, it's my money, I need a say into it. But if you're not professional, like I said previously, you may do more harm than good to the company. So in a way, I would like to throw up the question and see, since because every one of us knew that uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs coming around here, is this a trend going along that these companies will need these kind of management professionals coming in and do a little bit of management to help out the original management team? Because we know that uh, there's a lot of startups right now, there's a lot of new companies, uh, even university students, uh, people who have not as much as experience as these two panel speakers are, uh, they, they don't really know how, they may not know how things are going along. So is this a trend that we're looking at? So let's start with Duncan. Okay, before I start, can I do a little survey here? And um, can I ask how many of you are actually angel investors and how many of you are also planning to be angel investors? You raise your hand. Okay, quite a few, and then possibly the rest are startups. So the, I, I want to do a two minutes introduction of myself. So the, I'm Dr. Chiu, the, previously I uh, manage uh, one of my family company, and I invest privately in the tech um, scene uh, for the last 20 years. Um, before I found the Radiant VC. Um, before Radiant, I actually have invested into 18 deals in, um, in, in Asia, in China and Hong Kong. Uh, listed three in Hong Kong and one in Shenzhen, and then last starting from last year, um, I found um, Radiant VC on partner uh, going again, and then starting since then, starting to be professional, you know, um, uh, professionally running a, a fund, and I'm investing into early stage companies in Israel, in China, and Hong Kong, and um, we just got our first deal um, um, sold. Uh, the first company that we invested into uh, Israel was sold to Facebook uh, last month. Um, um, so around 3x from what we invested in a year. Um, we like a um, company that are in the early stage, pretty serious speed and um, we, okay, back to the questions. We actively, um, um, I wouldn't say manage, but we, we are active investors. Uh, we are very involved in the company in terms of the strategy, uh, in helping out the company in mapping the the C-level uh, 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 partners. We, we, we want the company to be more complete, so we, we feel that we are a company, we are a fund that we, 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 we are more um, value adding in terms of um, investment, but rather uh, but not uh, pure financial investors. We plan to be more strategic. So a lot of companies, I say from Israel or from the States, that we invest into, um, we like them to have a China angle, that we can bring them here, that we can show them you know, uh, 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 the network that we have, uh, show them the right partners to partner with in the region. And for companies in Hong Kong as well, we will, we will be helping them into bridging into the China market 
And for co companies in China that we invested, we, we, we provide an angle that, you know, we have, you know, the super connected role of Hong Kong, what CY talked about where it is in, in, in Israel. So I think we are more hands-on investors, but I wouldn't say that we prefer to manage the company. So cases that, man, uh, that's when you mentioned, you're more like a turnaround investment stories. Um, we are not into that. We, we, we rather invest early. Um, we take part in um, strategic planning. We take part in market growth. We take part in market intelligence because we're everywhere. We're in the States. We were just, I was just in Finder Startup last week. And um, we, 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 we have first-hand market intelligence of what you know startups are, 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 are focusing in different regions, in the States, in, the, in Israel, in Europe, and in Hong Kong. And with that market intelligence, sometimes it's meaningful to, to the startups because you don't want to duplicate effort into R&D and research on something that people have already done before. So um, um, uh, I would say we're hands-on, but we don't take part in that. Thank you, Duncan. Uh, I'm an old member of Hong Kong ECA, uh, but myself, we, I've been in uh, early stage, I've been more in early stage uh, venture investment. <coughs> but back to the association, we have a, boss, we have a few hundred members, we have a boss spectrum from early, early stage or advanced VC to uh, private equity, pro, pro stage five, late stage private equity, the IPO deals, to buyouts, the private equity firms that, that to, to buyouts. Of course, in buyout situation, you you, you got to pe prepare to sort of take over the company. It could be buying 100% of a control stake. There are PE firms that do control deals. In those cases, that uh, obviously you got to uh, prepare to, to sort of uh, to, to, to own the company, literally to own the company to run the business. And there are firms that specialize in uh, this sort of control deals. Uh, typically, I could give some examples like TBG acquired controlling stick in Samsung Development Bank. They were able to stay in a professional management team. They got the network, obviously, they got the network uh, to hire senior bankers, send in the senior bankers to, into the bank to turn, turn it around. And subsequently, they, they sold their sold their stake at a very handsome profit. Those, this is the one the one end of the sort of control deals. On the other end is the sort of uh, what myself have been uh, doing in the last twenty years, like like Duncan, uh, we're more in the early stage VC type. Uh, in the VC type of, uh, we don't take control position. We normally take a significant majority stake, let's say 15, 20, 25 percent. Uh, we I uh, like to call ourselves a uh, hands-on investor. We just don't, don't just don't give money to anyone, or otherwise, your money, your dollars, as good as mine, your dollars actually worth more than mine. I mean, you have more value add. We always emphasize our, our value added to sort of to our portfolio companies. We provide services and support to our sort of investors, to our portfolio companies, whatever we we can. Uh, very common. Examples are if you help them in the recruitment, like Duncan said, we help them fill in certain key positions. Like myself, I have experience help, uh, helping company recruit CFOs and uh, COO. Uh, very often, it's sort of early stage tech companies. If they are not started by university students, they might be started by some techies, some engineers. They may be quick at their technologies, engineering, at their product that they may, may not be experienced in financial management, in marketing. Know, even in running, running the operation. So we very often help them in uh, recruiting, uh, building the team. And then in strategy formulation, uh, which market should they tackle? Like ex I experienced in uh, investing in a medical equipment company in China. When I first met the company, I said, gee, I said, gee the company doesn't look like a Chinese company. The, product, the products don't look like Chinese products. So I, was, I told them that, yeah, the Chinese market is great, but the world market is even bigger. So I encouraged them to export, and they did. Actually, they, they, they applied for CEA certification and FDA approval. Actually, first we helped them recruit the CEO from Siemens Medical in Singapore. We actually brought the Siemens Medical uh, MD from Singapore to, to the company as a CEO. They introduced sort of, uh, all these 6-6 program for them to 